today we are into the molecular biology lab. Uh, I am taking you to a virtual tour, uh, explaining the basic uh, instruments which we use in the molecular biology lab. Uh, first of all, uh, you should be aware of uh, the uh, nucleus contamination. Okay, so that is one thing uh, we have to be careful. Secondly, uh, UV radiation is an important uh, hazard in the molecular biology lab. Thirdly, uh, uh, the chemicals. For example, the ethylene bromide is highly carcinogenic in nature. And then you have, uh, you'll be handling the radioactive materials also. So these are the precautions uh, you have to take. So just I will uh, explain the basic instruments uh, which we use uh, in the molecular biology. And the first and foremost basic instrument uh, which every molecular biology should have uh, is a uh, cooling microcentrifuge. Okay. Uh, so we know the principle of a centrifuge. We know that uh, in order to separate uh, uh, the different uh, biological uh, macro and micromolecules, uh, we can separate it uh, by uh, giving a centrifugal force. So that's what we do uh, in the uh, ultra centrifuge here. So in order to separate, uh, say for example, the nucleic acids, uh, uh, proteins, uh, and other macromolecules, uh, we need to have this particular uh, instrument. Okay. So this is a uh, micro centrifuge. We'll be using uh, 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 micro centrifuge uh, tubes. So these are the micro centrifuge tubes. Uh, it comes into two uh, ml volume, three ml volume, uh, one point five ml volume, etc. Okay. So uh, uh, whenever you, we go for genomic uh, DNA isolation, uh, we'll be taking the culture uh, in these micro centrifuge tubes, and then uh, we'll be centrifuging uh, the tube content. Okay. So by that way, you can separate the uh, microbial cells from that of the other uh, media, culture media, okay, a micro centrifuge. So this is a cooling uh, centrifuge where uh, whenever uh, you handle uh, with the nucleic acids and the other uh, macromolecules and micromolecules, uh, we should uh, always deal with a lower temperature in order to minimize the impact of nucleus enzyme, okay. So just like a centrifuge, you have a central rotor and you have the assembling slots, uh, tube holding slots and then you will be place, placing the micro centrifuge tubes in the respective slots. Okay. So based on how many samples you have, you will be placing them. Okay. So this cool, you can set the temperature, you can set the um, uh, speed. So usually uh, we go for around say 10,000 RPM for the uh, uh, for the extraction of the um, or the concentration of the uh, microbial cells. So you can vary the speed as well as the time and then um, you can operate the uh, micro centrifuge. So the inside uh, will be cooler so that uh, the nucleus activity can be minimized. So this is the safety cap after uh, inserting uh, the samples close it with the safety uh, cap and then you have to close the main lid and then you have to set the time and the speed and then you have to press to start okay so after the set time the machine auto automatically will stop and then you can withdraw the sample. Okay. Important uh, instrument uh, we have in the molecular biology lab is the gel electrophoresis instrumentation. So here, the, in gel electrophoresis instrumentation, there are uh, different parts. So this is the uh, buffer holding tank where uh, you will be uh, pouring the buffer, the respective buffer, and then uh, it will be placed in a level surface okay and then this is the gel casting tray where the aggressive gel is cast on this particular tray and then you have the different sized cones where according to your convenience that number of samples you can use these types of cones that will be inserted into the into the gel after the gel gets solidified then you can carefully remove the comb and then you have the wells imprinted on the gel and then this will be placed into the gel buffer tank 
so the the uh, the the gel will be completely immersed in the gel buffer okay and then you can see two terminals okay you have a positive and a negative terminal so this will be connected to a power pack so this is the power pack usually which accompanies uh, a gel electrophoresis equipment and here in the power pack you can adjust the voltage and then it have a positive and a negative terminal so accordingly you have to connect the power to the right polarity okay so usually uh, the dna nucleic acids are negatively charged so usually they move uh, towards the positively charged uh, pole okay so after loading the uh, nucleic acids you have to switch on the power pack and uh, the current will traverse through the buffer and at the same time the nucleic acids move towards the positively charged pole and then uh, you can separate the uh, uh, the biological material okay so this is the another basic instrument we have uh, in molecular biology lab so this is another power pack which you use for a little bit uh, larger uh, gel electrophoresis equipments so this is another type of uh, gel electrophoresis okay and then you have uh, a uh, uv uh, illuminator where uh, you know once uh, you run the uh, nucleic acids uh, or uh, uh, biological uh, uh, macromolecules into the sample uh, in order to visualize them you will be adding ethylene bromide as a uh, as a colorant so this ethylene bromide will glow under the uv light so this is an uv illuminator where you can take out the gel and then place place it inside the illuminator and then this is the safety cover you have to cover it because you, you have uh, the uv radiation coming out and then you have to switch on the instrument so that you can visualize the ethylene bromide will glow and then uh, you can confirm it uh, uh, the nucleic acid is present or not and you can uh, have a quantitative evaluation also okay so this is a simple basic illuminator and then we have uh, the gel dog also that i'll show you in the um, uh, coming slides okay so this is a gel dog uh, system where uh, we visualize and uh, then uh, we capture uh, the nucleic acids uh, with the help of uh, inverted cameras. Okay, so just I, as I showed you uh, the visualization of uh, nucleic acids and the illuminator, it works the same principle. So you have to keep the gel along with the separated samples here. It has to be closed. So we have to take all precautions. Okay, you have to close the door, and then uh, you will be switching on the instrument. And after that, you can visualize everything in the computer screen. Okay. So this is connected with the software and then uh, you can um, uh, completely uh, visualize the sample uh, at whatever um, uh, strength it may be and then uh, you can analyze uh, uh, the, the results, how the, how the nucleic acids have come out, whether it is degraded or whether it is intact uh, or whether any contaminant is there, all, all these thing, things can be, uh, can be uh, visualized uh, in the computer and then you can store it uh, in different format so that is one added advantage so this is uh, this is called as gel documentation system where you dock the uh, gel images and then uh, you use it for uh, future uh, applications okay so the common uh, type of uh, uh, equipment we have in molecular biology lab is uh, a hot water bath so usually uh, genomic dna isolation protocols uh, after adding the enzymes, uh, we'll be uh, setting a particular temperature, and then uh, in a sample will be incubated uh, for a particular temperature and time, so that uh, the enzymatic reaction can take place. So usually, uh, uh, the hot water baths are used in the molecular biology lab in order to enhance the uh, enzymatic reactions and uh, to speed up uh, the, uh, the the extraction process. Okay. So we use uh, the hot water bath for different purposes. Perforation uh, or shock treatment. Uh, we'll be using uh, uh, these um, uh, programmable uh, uh, thermo thermal bath. We can say that. Okay. So this is the programmable unit where uh, you can set the temperature, time, everything, and then you have the water bath here, uh, where you have a motor which uh, circulates the water. You get a uniform temperature in the water bath. And then you can um, you can place uh, the 
uh, microcentrifuge tubes or the samples containing nucleic acids into it and then uh, for the particular time. Okay, uh, very important instruments we have uh, in the molecular biology lab. So this is another mini equipment, uh, magnetic stirrer like instrument, where uh, we use for uh, for uh, mixing the uh, the reaction content. Okay, so we we'll have the uh, material in the test tube, and then if we just press uh, towards the the instrument, to have a spin of the, over that. Okay, because uh, when we when we handle uh, nucleic acids uh, in the solution, it should be handled very gently. So that's why we use uh, this type of highly sensitive equipment. Okay, you, you should not be centrifuging it. If you centrifuge it, the nucleic acids will really get damaged. Okay, so this is a very uh, mini or uh, micro type uh, magnetic stir, you can say. Uh, and then you have uh, uh, a, a small, uh, uh, what you call, uh, centrifuge like thing. It's just to fuge just for uh, mixing it mixing it up okay so we can use uh, this instrument uh, to mix the reaction content uh, so that uh, uh, the uniform um, reaction will take place in the micro centrifuge tube and just so we'll be placing the micro centrifuge and then close it up you can just mix it up concentrate all the uh, uh, reactant into the bottom of the uh, tube so that you will get a uniform uh, reaction okay so this is a univisible uh, spectrophotometer so usually uh, 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 the nucleic acid analysis uh, uh, in, in nucleic acid analysis uh, we have to uh, have a quantity and quality check of the material which we are extracted so usually uh, we uh, uh, undergo the spectrophotometric method for uh, the analysis of nucleic acid so this is a uv spe uh, visible spectrophotometer so uh, we know that uh, uh, the nucleic acids have maximum absorption at 280 nanometer under the UV range. Okay. So uh, th this uh, instrument is specially for uh, uh, measuring the nucleic acids. So uh, it have different uh, scanning uh, at 260, 280, 300 and 320 nanometer. So that uh, in this particular spectrum we can uh, have a good estimate of the uh, the amount and quantity and quality of the nucleic acids which we have absorbed. So this is the PCR machine, and then you have uh, the, the the wells where uh, the reaction takes place. So we, you have the uh, micro uh, PCR uh, tubes where you, it will be placed in the in the respective wells after mixing all the reaction mixtures. And then you'll be closing it uh, with the uh, with the hot uh, lid, so that to have a uniform temperature uh, over the samples. So this PCR machine has to be switched on. Then it has to be programmed uh, based on uh, the the type of experiment you are going to conduct. For example, if you if you want to um, uh, amplify a 16 RNA gene, then you have to um, acquire the primers required for that amplifications, and then. You have to set uh, the PCR machine to different characteristics. For example, uh, cloning purposes, uh, we know that there are different steps. Okay, so heating and cooling, etc. So for denaturation and the, and then um, uh, the synthesis of the nucleic acids, so you have to set uh, according to protocol. So that this will be set, and then uh, when you switch on the instrument, it automatically uh, goes through different cycles, and then. Uh, it completes the entire cycle and then uh, it stops. After uh, the PCR reaction, you have to take the sample out and then uh, uh, you have to check it in a uh, electrophoresis. So this is a, a rocker system where uh, the samples are kept over this and then uh, it rocks over for a for a gentle mixture. Okay. So usually, in a molecular biology lab will be having an isolated uh, laminar floor. Uh, uh, say for example, suppose we are uh, handling with uh, any pathogenic or contagious uh, organisms, uh, we should uh, have this safety uh, average. Okay, so we, uh, you all know that uh, how uh, we use a, um, a lambda code uh, in the microbiology lab. So the same way, so this is a small one, and then um, uh, most of the uh, the uh, uh, bacterial uh, transfer and uh, the culture transfer, etc. All this will be done here. 
and um, after transferring then uh, you will be taking it to the uh, to the micro centrifuge for uh, for the separation of the bacteria cells from the culture okay. so all uh, microbiological work uh, you can uh, do it in the lamina for so we have a uv uh, disinfectant and then uh, before starting half an hour you have to switch on the uv and uh, see that the entire thing is stabilized and after that you have to switch on the blow it so that uh, your side will be safe okay so after transferring and other things then it can be taken up uh, in for the for the uh, uh, reactions so you know, this is a, a mini uh, lamina for um, uh, food which you have in the molecular bio so the, the, this is a must for any molecular bio because we all start with the microorganisms global the lab uh, we have uh, different level of storage for example uh, for uh, short term storages we can use uh, uh, 4 degree or, or or below that and for long term uh, storage uh, we need uh, a freezer like this so this is a minus 80 uh, freezer where uh, you can store samples for years together okay so we we know that um, nucleic acids when exposed to the environment they they get degraded so it is necessary that we have to uh, store the samples uh, in this type of minus 80 uh, freezers so that we can store it for a longer time so usually when we isolate the nucleic acids from uh, the organisms uh, we take a small sample for doing the experiment and after that the stock samples has to be preserved for uh, further studies so this is one way we can store uh, the, the samples for long term um, applications or experimentation mm -hmm. and um, this is very important that um, uh, at minus 80 uh, uh, you can just put your hand in, inside this uh, equipment so you should have some protecting gloves and other things to operate this and of course uh, we need a air conditioned environment to maintain this particular equipment okay so this is another uh, important uh, equipment you should have uh, in any marker by chilla okay. so this is a rotary shaker where uh, you know that um, Uh, for uh, uh, cultural preparations and uh, uh, the propagation of uh, the microorganisms um, in conical flasks, uh, we will be using this water shaker. So the the, the bacterial species uh, which are grown in uh, broth will be kept in the water shakers in the previous day, and after the, that the culture will be taken out, taken out, and then uh, uh, we we examine uh, uh, the culture. Uh, Good strength, like which is in the late long phase, and then uh, this culture will be taken out for the extraction of the nucleic acids. So, a rotary shaker is an important instrument in molecular biology lab where, uh, for the enumeration of the bacteria, they 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 are concentration that is very important. So, whenever you do the experimentations or whenever you transport the samples uh, or whenever you take the samples out. for uh, adding uh, the uh, the chemicals of like that uh, we'll be using uh, uh, the the ice flakes okay so it will be the samples always should be inversed in the ice flakes so this is a uh, ice flake uh, flaker or ice maker we can say where uh, it manufactures ice flakes so that ice flakes can be taken out and then it will be like baskets where you can um, uh, immerse uh, the samples whenever you do an experimentation so this is uh, one of uh, another important um, equipment which is uh, necessary in any molecular biology lab you should have a uh, ready made ice with you whenever you start with an experiment there all the molecular biology work uh, are uh, done with uh, molecular biology grade water okay i am using water so this is uh, a millipore uh, uh, grade 1 and grade 2 uh, generating equipment where Uh, you'll get uh, two types of water. One is uh, uh, we can say the double distilled water, okay, and then uh, you have the molecular grade water, okay. So for general uh, preparations, chemical preparation, etc., uh, gel preparation, etc., you can use the double distilled water. And for uh, PCR reactions uh, and other type of um, uh, sequencing and uh, molecular works, uh, you'll be uh, uh, using the This is grade water. Okay, so this is an instrument uh, which is very important um, for any uh, molecular biology related uh, 
application. I'll just show you how to operate a micro pipette. Okay. So this is a, a, a 0.1 to 2 microliter uh, micro pipette. Okay. So uh, it handles very 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 small uh, volume of sample. It will be just like a drop. Okay. So I'll show you how to operate this. You have to set the uh, you have to set the reading on the micro pipette so how much volume you want okay say i am taking two microliter so i have set two okay and then you have to hold the pipette in this direction okay it should be, it should be like this okay even when you leave it, it will not fall down okay so that's why they have a hook over here okay so this is the piston which you can press okay and then uh, you have uh, the micro pipette tips is very important it is sterilized okay so each pipette have their own standard size of uh, the, the tips okay so th these are the tips for uh, the two micro uh, uh, micro pipettes so it will exactly fit uh, into the mouth if it is loose then it will leak out Okay, so you'll not be pipetting the required volume. Okay, so this is now tight. So you have to take the tip and then you have to press into deep into the sample and then you gently lift the piston and the sample will be thrown into the micro tip. And then you can dispense, in, uh, dispense it in the, into the sampling tube and you have to completely press full down the piston so that the entire uh, sample will be dispensed into the uh, centrifuge tube okay so this uh, all all micro pipettes have two steps so this is step one and then two okay so when dispensing you have to completely press the second step also so when you are taking the sample it should be first level you have to take the sample and then while dispensing one two you have to completely dispense and then you have to dispose the tips like this so this is how you operate the micro pipettes these are the uh, basic uh, instruments right from uh, the micro centrifuge then electrophoresis then uh, the hot water bath then uh, uh, the uh, the the uh, vortexing machines, PCR machines, uh, gel dock systems. So these are the basic uh, instruments which you require in the molecular biology lab. And with these instruments, uh, you can uh, do cloning and other uh, other type of experiments. Uh, you can amplify a particular section of uh, DNA. You can do a cloning uh, method. You can prepare uh, the sequencing reactions. So after this, then you have to, the next step is sequencing, where uh, you have to take the sample out and then uh, you have to do, uh, do a place where they have the sequences, etc. And uh, of course, uh, in Kochi, I think uh, we have a sequencing machine in uh, Ames and uh, otherwise you have to give it to Bangalore or Hyderabad like that. Okay, so now the cheap, uh, sequencing machines are uh, becoming cheaper and uh, maybe in future we can have one in our lab. Okay, so after sequencing, you can completely uh, read out uh, the sequences uh, in that particular gene, and then uh, you can have more study on that. So this is how uh, we uh, we uh, uh, elaborate the molecular biology work, right from uh, the isolation of uh, genomic DNA from the bacteria, and to the visualization, and then go for further higher studies. Okay.